This is second day your motherless home, Makutuisandu. In 2003, I took a journey with Tony Subaya and Bukola Olaoye. Olaoye had gone around the country looking for orphanages in distress and he had discovered this woman called Madame Ekundayo. After talking to her for about 10 minutes, I just started to cry because I felt so empty. You know, there was something about her that felt very peaceful and very wholesome. I could tell that she was happy, you know, but I felt like my own life was just about me and my projects and the things that I wanted. That feeling stayed with me for a very long time. And then one day I wrote a song about it. Everyone was talking about a song called Ekundayo and Fumishi off the album. And she said, this is this video I want to do. I want to do a video for this song called Ekundayo. And she played it for me. It was so powerful and overwhelming. And I was like, whatever video you do for this, it needs to match that because you could have a video that will bring down the emotion that you're compelled to have when you listen to the song. One night, T.Y. gave me a call. She called me about 11 p.m. And she said, oh, guess what? We're going to um, shoot Ekundayo tomorrow. And I'm like, oh, great. Where? You know, in Lagos. And, you know, she's like, no, we're going to Kogi State. I knew the only crazy person I could call at such short notice was Ab Abi Olayinka. So I called him up and then with Leke Baduru and Shino Beno, he hopped on a plane and went off to Ilong. I just wanted to capture the whole momentum and the whole idea behind the song that T.Y. had written. <laughs> when we got to Kogi State, um, you know, we started to set up. T.Y. had everything in her head. And the biggest challenge that I had was I didn't just want to make another nice music video. We found out that a lot of the orphanages in the country are very seriously underfunded. I wanted a music video that would really tug at the hearts of people and make them want to do something. There's so much more that we can do and there's so much joy. The joy that, that you feel when you actually go out there and, and become a blessing to another human being is beyond whatever sacrifice you have to make. As the director performed shots of the video, she had actually gone off with Abby to Kogi to shoot the documentary style part of it. And um, so it was now the pretty pictures to add to it. What we wanted to do was find some sort of a juxtaposition between barren land, barren field, or something that was barren, and then the beauty of the talent in there. So what we did was we had very rustic surroundings, and then the women were elaborately dressed. How did you feel, Auntie Kumi? Hot. <laughs> Hot, but it was fun. It was fun. It was really strange doing the fast, you know, the fast part. Working with Olufumi on the video was an absolutely amazing process. She was very, very gracious. And I remember when we had to do um, an extra day of shooting, she never complained because we weren't supposed to come back an extra day. The video was um, a three-tier type of structure where you had three different directors who shot in very three different ways and then fusing all of this together into a very fluid type of emotional story. I definitely grew because everybody just had this sense of fulfillment. It wasn't anything about the shooting but it was just like some growth that you had by being part of the project. Even like the people like were gaffers or people that we we'd hired for just for the day felt there was like a definite energy on the set. A lot of people helped make this video happen. I don't think we could have pulled it off by ourselves, you know, we had a lot of help from from every angle. People really wanted to get involved, you know, from Inka Odubi to Lanre Kupolui, Tori Subaya, um, 
If I'm a Fafu, why are you doing a little bit from Ayo Banjo? If I'm a Williams, Banke Mishida, we had so many people, you know, Yemisi Ilo, Corey Day Roberts, coming together to make sure that this message got out. Mama has kind of really remained with us because she's been waiting for someone to hand over the orphanage to. And her daughter told me that, T.Y., once I take over this orphanage, Mama is going to be gone. I'm really happy that we're finishing this video now, and I'm happy that Mama is still with us. And I hope that she, she, she realizes that there are people out there who appreciate what she has done. You know, and it's so good that she, we're doing this while she's still alive. What time is it now? It's just about 5 a.m. It's about 5 a.m. It's about 5 a.m. Let's go say hello to Mama. Oh, oh, oh.